then we entered the, the, the second stage of the project. We were lucky enough to have um, the Obe Arup office involved. We had Cecile Balmain working on the project with us. We had uh, Francis Archer. And um, obviously when we started working on the second phase, they said, no way we're doing two exoskeletons. We can do one. But I think it's very important that we concentrate on winning the commission. No? Two exoskeletons. Uh, they didn't see... Um, um, they wanted to prove that this was buildable for the amount of money that these guys had. So the way that the, the Arab can prove, uh, would prove that it was, they said, okay, let's concentrate on one thing. Let's have a central core. So you have a central core like a tree no? uh, in the middle. And then let's have five 11-story buildings that are very simple stru structurally. So uh, instead of having the, these huge columns at the bottom and then just going up all the way to the top of the same section and, and spending a lot of money with the structure, why don't we have these... Uh, um, uh, really simple structures of these buildings and lift them up in the 50th floor, 40th floor but then the extra uh, support that it needs you transfer the load to the exterior and you support it with the exoskeleton so this way the money that you would have saved inside the building you could spend it on the exterior and have an, a very interesting form or shape so um, I said yeah I mean uh, I'm not, I wasn't too um, stuck with the two exoskeletons I said this, this is perfect because we can prove that it could sell and they can, they, they can build this. And uh, the guys from, from Oviado at the end were amazing because they, they showed up with all these plastic models and, and construction sequences of how to get this thing built. And I, I was amazed because there was a time in Mexico where we had great structural uh, engineers. And after the 85 earthquake, nobody wants to design the structure anymore. They just put your model in the computer and they just take out the results and say that's what it is with the new uh, laws after the 85 earthquake. So there's no design, there's no fun in structures anymore after what happened. And, and as, if you can remember all these structures by Felix Candela in Mexico City or when we had uh, uh, John Lautner who used to work for Frank Lloyd Wright do a couple of houses in Mexico. These concrete slabs were about, I don't know, maybe um, five centimeters thin and they would just span really uh, amazingly. So. Um, after hearing all your engineers say, no, you can't do this, you can't build it, no, the section is too skinny, then hearing the guy from Arup say, how do you want it, that, that's, that's comfortable. <laughs> we, we were working with these fancy, uh, oh, I think I, I have the, the other presentation here, but we were uh, trying to prove to them also the efficiency of the building, so you would hit every, every one of these floors and you would have the different uh, percentage of efficiency of, of uh, areas, and then the theme gardens, and then the rooftop. I think I have a another section there. Oh, I mean, this was done in. Um, I think we had a, we had um, two months to do the project. It was eight, eight, eight weeks that we had, and we had to come up with. A, I mean, we had to design all the cross sections with all the specifications for Canadian buildings, and um, so again, it's it's these things that you do have to. Not only you have to be good designing, or have to try to uh, challenge it a bit more, but you have to read, I don't know how many documents to get everything as they wanted it to be presented. Um, again, we were presenting the units where they were with photo rendering so they could see exact, the exact amount of space. First shown in floor plans and then, well, some sections. Since it was a very long tower. <laughs> We did, a, we did the section in sections, <laughs> and uh, this was how the high rise would look at, uh, would be seen. And uh, uh, one, one thing that it, it gained once they split the buildings was with these areas on top, which were amazing, because then you have uh, this area where people can come down from the tower and, and, and just uh, be at the garden or at the, these landscape areas. And um, it's funny because I always call this, um, uh, it's called... Um, for security reasons, when they have to evacuate the building, all the people from this uh, uh, 11 stories come down to this part, and it's called uh, refuge area. Yeah. And uh, but I, I, I don't know why I stuck with the word in my head, and I called it a refugee area. So when I represented <laughs> the building, they said, "Why would anybody that lives there want to have refugees in the in the garden underneath? What is, for who is it for?" No? So it's a refugee area, not a refugee. Uh, some other images. One of the images from below, like I was. Uh, trying to imagine this um, being just there at the, from the underneath. This, when we lost the exoskeleton from the inside, I mean, uh, we were doing these renderings with uh, the glass images so you could see the reflection of the skeleton. So, at, also, at the, it didn't lose too much at the end. No? And, uh, 
and again, we really wanted to have this this thing built. And we we were two finalists, and uh, others out of the six, because what, I had a friend of mine who was uh, living in, in Toronto, and they made this very public, and you could vote uh, on the internet and everything. He told me that the decision was based on our project and the guy from from China. And at the end, uh, Jiang Song Ma, who's 32 years old, won the competition, and he's not only building the tower, now he's building this tower and the one next to it because they, they, uh, it was a five tower uh, complex. So they, the architect in charge of the other towers, they, they threw him out and he's doing two towers. I, again, I, I love when, when everything starts speaking uh, the same dialogue. So even the landscaping, even the, the urban furniture is made with the, the same uh, patterns of the grid. So you feel the building uh, really alive. So uh, it's not this thing that they bought these nice benches and they just threw them in place or, uh, or bought some lighting. Um, also some rendering, so... Uh, you should help. Yep. Was it all done in Archicad? Uh, Archicad? No, the, the structure, uh, the exoskeleton was done in, in, in 3D Studio and then uh, brought back to, to Archicad and then some renderings are done. These interiors are done with... Uh, I have some done in Atlantis and some done in B-Ray with uh, uh, another guy who's we were working. I mean, whoever could do something <laughs> and render with anything, we were having him uh, be part of the team, no? Because we wanted to make sure that the client understood and saw every detail of the buildings and the interior spaces. And for instance, he wouldn't get frightened of seeing a structure outside because uh, the first impression by the client was like he thought it was a net on the building. So nobody's gonna want to live in a thing covered in a net. It's, it looks like uh, you're being trapped inside. These were some of the erosion sequences, how I'd call them, of how if you have a, a structure then they, they put it through a program that's called erosion sequence and it starts thinning the parts that don't need the extra structure. So this thing starts becoming uh, lighter. And also uh, Mahadev Raman from the Arab office in New York um, also did ran some studies to see where the structure needed to be thicker or, or thinner depending on the on the light coming in or the orientations um, this is the the construction sequence that Arab did so you can see the cranes uh, going to the foundation then once they do the the, um, the central core they pop up to the central core and start building from there so even the construction process we were trying to convince the clients that our tower was the best possibility if you start seeing the blue uh, highlighted uh, floor plan, uh, if you, see, you see these three uh, blue elements, it keeps on growing. This means that they could have started selling these units even though the tower was not built yet. So they could have these units totally finished, a turnkey project, you could start living in the space, and you wouldn't be bothered because they were building the, uh, the rest of the, uh, of the tower above and without causing any trouble to the, to the, to the people living there. And, um, it was a very efficient process, but okay. This is a small. This is the, the the only thing that we didn't finish in time, and I was I was really angry. This is a, this was just a, a, a the path sequence, and then they needed to put all the ambient and the lighting and everything. So we only could get this um, camera moving in that direction, which I, I obviously I like the camera, but we are doing. A